Well, initially we just did little local gigs, you know, and then we we some I probably through some of the singers that we hooked up with that um, we got hold of. They were more established, you know. Um, some of them had managers, I remember. Yeah, a manager. And they would know, they knew various agents. Um, I mean, the Comanches, we did this, our first single, I, think, I can't even remember the, the label, or something like, I think it was Polydor, actually. The second single, anyway, the second single was on Pi. But the Comanches, you know, we got involved with this uh, uh, American A&R guy who worked for the music publisher Campbell Connelly. Campbell Connelly was we're in Denmark Street, Tim Pan Alley. And as a kid, as a teenager, I worked in the trade department at Campbell Connelly. In, in. So I was there, you know, in Denmark, going up to Denmark Street every day as a teenager. And that was about the time we were recording our second single. And, you know, I'd be there and sending out, you know, loads of buddy Beatles music, parcels of Beatles music every day to music shops up and down the country. And uh, you mentioned Andrew Luke Oldham. I was in the, in Campbell Canadies one day and he was recording something under the title of the Andrew Luke Oldham Orchestra. And the guy that was our manager at the time, Mike, somebody. <laughs> he, he suddenly said, Andrew Luke Oldham's recording something across the street um, and he wants to put some, a guitar track. So they, uh, so they, he just went and got a Stratocaster from uh, Francis Day and Hunter in Chancross Road. And, and I ended up playing on a, one of Andrew Luke Oldham's tracks, you know. Things like that happened all the time in, in, in uh, Denmark Street. It was, the Regent Sound, I was in, we were in and out of Regent Sound doing demos and things like that, and bits and bobs. Yeah, it was really strange. <laughs>